ecstatic for the win. Uh, it's really, really good to um, fight through, and I mean fight through, uh, a game like tonight. I think there's, um, there's certain times of the year, there's certain nights of the year. Um, Ball State last night at Notre Dame. Doesn't matter, you can go on down the list. They happen a lot. And uh, uh, you can uh, lose very easily in college basketball. And uh, um, they took the fight to us, give Matt tremendous amount of credit. That team was prepared, that's how we play. Uh, they fought, they competed. Um, glad we made free throws, which was great for Tijon and, and Trent. And then um, got on the offensive glass enough to um, uh, get an opportunity to finish the game on an 18 to five or 18 to seven run. So um, all in all, a tough night when you turn it over 25 times, a tough night offensively um, with nine assists. Uh, I told our team, I, you know, I've led the country in assist. I finished second once, and um, you know we're not executing very well on the offensive end when we have nine, and we, I think we had eight the other night. So um, we got to figure out how to make an entry so we can just get get into it. Questions? Brad. Did it surprise you a little bit because you see this type of pressure each day in practice that they didn't handle it better um, when you got out there? Not really. We don't run it against ourselves. We're two hoots either. So um, we play with more. We play. We play looser in practice uh, against it. You know, we'll, we're smart enough to pr in practice we'll back cut and get open and 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 there was a there was a passiveness tonight that we. Um, Again, give give Foster P a lot of credit, and and um, you know it was it was us losing our poise and patience and not handling it, and started with the first possession of the game, dribbling off her foot with a little ball pressure. I you know what. Um, in, in all honesty, and I mean, I, I walked out as the team was getting ready to take the floor, and I walked into the coach's locker room, and I asked him in the, in the locker room in front of the team, I said, what did I say about our locker room? And they said, you said it's a morgue. I'm not used to that. I'm used to guys bouncing off the walls. I'm used to guys ripping doors off and, and, and antsy and ready to play. And uh, there's a passion that you have to have to play. I try to bring that every day. I try to do my job every day with the same consistency and passion. And I, I expect that from our team. And I told our coaches, I said, this is a Morgan here. You know, and, and I got on my son after the game. He's been around it. He knows. I don't care if he's playing or not. He can, he can help there. And um, you, you get so few opportunities to be as blessed as our players are to be at this university, to wear that jersey, and to go out and play, and, and we gotta have we gotta have some passion. And uh, um, I don't know. I guess I'm not surprised because of what I said after after the game. Just to follow up there, um, how, how do you coach that up, or is that got to be player driven? Do you see anybody that can do that for you? Yeah, AJ's been really was really good yesterday in practice. Um, I'm excited for Leron because I think he's starting to, to get it a little bit, um, and um, I don't know. That's part of leadership. It's part. Of, I mean, it, it's it's. Um, you know, I said it last week. I said when I came out of the locker room, um, I never had to worry when the lights were on. I've always had guys ready to go, and uh, um, but uh, I, I was really proud of Mark Smith tonight. I thought he fought back. I I, I didn't start him. Not not for the way the game started so much as just to kind of let him see it, catch his breath, maybe get a different perspective on it. Uh, you, most of you guys know I'm not overly concerned with who's in the starting lineup, um, but I thought I thought there was some, there was another there was a spark there tonight. He was great, and uh, Demonte and 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 I thought those two in the second half were really the only two guys that were that were 
able to catch a ball in a wing just so we could just so we could enter offense. Uh, what was the message to the team in the locker room during half? I mean, I was, you know, I think there was a couple things that we were trying to do. One, you know, we we burped a lot of layups. We'd gotten a few shots blocked because we took them timid, so we needed to play with a little more finesse. And then it was trying to help them get into some sort of offensive rhythm. And uh, with LaRon out of the game most of the first half with two fouls, um, it was, you know, really trying to get him some touches and get him established. Brad, uh, Aaron Jordan's uh, towards start to start the season, uh, he kind of came back down to earth tonight. Just Is that just an isolated incident, or do you expect him to bounce back this weekend? No, that was Matt Figger telling me he wouldn't, he wouldn't score. That's what that was, and they succeeded at it. I, and that's not that's us not being able to execute well enough. That's on me. No, that's not. We got to learn to execute to get good players' shots. And the shots he took tonight were were kind of out of rhythm. But Fig said he was going to do it. He did it. Give him credit. And you know he's we've been together now. That was that was like an old slugfest in the sandbox. You know where you where it was two teams that knew each other extremely well, and every play call he made I knew, and every play call I made he knew, and. And and sometimes you get ugly when you, um, when you when you know everybody's move. But give give Fig and them a lot of lot of credit. Thank you. All right.